Okay, welcome to the afternoon session of Show and Tell, folks. I promised the people I'd do this, so I'm going to do it. If everybody will take out a dollar and explain to you a little of this mystic symbolism that the secret societies use. And if you don't have a dollar bar up from your neighbor, don't worry about not getting it back because it's not worth anything anyway. <laughs> if you look on the back of the dollar bill, you'll see the great seal of the United States, both the obverse and the reverse of the seal. The obverse is the portion that has the eagle, the reverse has this pyramid. <laughs> The obverse, or the front face of the Great Seal of the United States, is the one that we're going to look at first. Now, the mystery schools are the ancient temples, the ancient religions. The primary object of worship was the sun, Amun Ra, Osiris, Isis. The Temple of Isis was a, part, was a part of this. The ultimate meaning of all this, though, is veiled. What the people always saw is what's called the exoteric interpretation. While the guardians of the secrets of the ages, the initiates, the adepts, guarded the esoteric or the truth of it. So the sun, the object of worship, is a symbol for something else. It's also known as the light. It's also known as the intellect. It's also called Lucifer. The primary philosophy is this, that man was held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, victim, an unjust vindictive God, and he was chained in the bonds of ignorance. Lucifer. The fallen angel of life who was cast down to the earth to be the ruler of the earth. Through his agent, Satan, released man from the bondage with the gift of intellect. With this intellect, man will develop technology and will become himself God. So when you break all this down, to the ultimate end, what they worship is man. They believe that man is God. It is the humanist religion. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? Now, it doesn't make any difference whether you believe in Lucifer or Satan or God at all. Because this is a story in their mind which is the exoteric that they give us, whereby behind the scenes they don't believe in any God. They don't believe any God exists. They don't believe in any, any devil exists. This is all a philosophy justifying the deification of mankind. Okay? Now, you'll see these people every once in a while. You'll meet somebody like Shirley MacLaine that will tell you that she is God. Watch what they do when they get in trouble. You'll find out that they're not God at all. They may even come to you for help. But that's at the very heart root of all of this. The goal of the mystery schools, the modern day mystery schools, is to destroy all existing governments, all existing religions, and chain the mob. That's us. They believe that they're the only ones in the world who possess a truly mature mind, and thus they're the only ones who should rule. And that we are cattle, animals. And this is their philosophy in a nutshell. A nation or world of people who do not use their intellect are no better than animals who do not have intellect 
and thus are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. And I have to say this, 90% of the time most people prove them right. Most people have never had an original thought in their life. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Our forefathers belonged to these secret societies. Now some people have come to me and said, Bill, you claim the Constitution is so great, how can you do that and then say that our forefathers are members of this secret society that's trying to destroy this country and bring about the New World Order? They think there's a dichotomy there, and there's not. Because this was the grand experiment. It was also the antithesis to the monarchs, the kings and queens of Europe, whom they had sworn to topple from their thrones. How do you topple a king from the throne? You give the people, the subjects, a taste of freedom. Go ahead, sir, just walk around the camera if you will. All through history, let me give you a little background. All through history, man had claimed that he didn't need to be ruled by kings and queens and that he wasn't property and he didn't want to be property. Because up until the time this country was founded, no people in this whole world had ever been free and had always been the property of the ruler. The king, the king, the queen, the emperor, whatever they called themselves. Man was a property just like a cow, a cow was. What made somebody free, what made them capable of ruling, was genetics. Your line of genetic descent or ancestry determined whether you were going to be property or you were going to be a king. And nothing else determined that. Our forefathers, in their efforts to bring about their dream of a perfect world where they would not be oppressed by kings or queens or by popes or religions or by the mob. In their quest for that, they created this nation as the antithesis to the kings and queens and emperors and empresses of the old world. And they knew that if they gave the common man a taste of freedom, that the kings and queens and emperors would topple off their thrones like dominoes in a row across the floor. And that's exactly what happened. Not long after this country was established, the French Revolution took place by the same groups. The same secret societies caused the French Revolution, caused the revolution in this country. All of our forefathers belonged to the Freemasons. They were all also Knights Templars. They were also members of the Illuminati. They were not bad men. The people who are bringing about the New World Order today do not believe themselves to be bad men. They believe it must be done in the best interest of mankind. And they believe that the end justifies the means so that if they have to kill two billion people to realize the dream, there will finally be a thousand years of peace. But their logic is convoluted, and they're tripping over their own philosophy in many places, as you will find out when you begin to seriously study this, if you do, and I hope that you do. They founded this country, and they gave us the most perfect document for ruling a country that has ever been written in the history of the world, the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. It did not give us freedoms. It restricted the government. It made us sovereign kings in our own right, and for the first time in the history of the world, made the government the chattel slave of the people. It reversed, turned the tables on everything that had gone before. They built into the Constitution and the Bill of Rights every tool that we would ever need to keep our freedom and stay free. They also built into the Constitution two things that would ensure our downfall should we prove unworthy of ruling ourselves. And it was the great experiment. Can man rule himself or must he have a king? And those two things they built into the Constitution was the creation of a foreign country within this country called the federal government residing in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., who 
as citizens only under the 14th Amendment and have no constitutional rights. As citizens only under the 14th Amendment and have no constitutional rights. And the other one is the right to contract. With the right to contract, they dangle bait from the Federal District of Columbia, such as Social Security, which says, since you're irresponsible and can't save $110 every month and invest it in any kind of an interest-bearing investment, we will take that money from you if you choose to participate in this program, and we will keep it in a trust account, and when you grow old, we will give you money that will take care of you in your old age so you will not be a burden on society. The public fell for this because in their hearts they knew that if they took $110 every month and saved it in any kind of an interest-bearing account, even the lowest, by the time they retired, they'd be so wealthy it'd be beyond their wildest dreams. But they knew they wouldn't do it. They knew they'd spend the money. So they joined the Social Security program. And now they can't even buy dog food with what they get. But even more important, by contracting with that federal government to receive that benefit, they then became 14th Amendment citizens of the Federal District of Columbia and gave up their constitutional rights. And that's the downfall. Anytime you accept something from daddy, you have to give something in return. How many of you ever went home after you had left home and come of age and left home? How many of you have done that? Quite a few. What happened when you went home? When daddy said be in by midnight, you had to be in by midnight, didn't you? Even though you were 26 or 28 or 30 or however old you were. If daddy said, listen, your mother fixes dinner at 6 o'clock, you better be sitting at this table at 6 o'clock, or you can go find someplace else to live, then you better be sitting at the table at 6 o'clock, right? This is called socialism, folks. Free people have to be responsible for themselves. And freedom requires work and risk effort. And sometimes you're playing with the odds. And each man gets according to what they build themselves. If they can build an empire, they're entitled to it. If they can't, they're not. Socialism is this. I can't take care of myself. I can't handle this freedom. I'm irresponsible and there is no God, so I know I'm going to die and somebody must protect me. Somebody's got to feed me and guarantee me a job. And if I get sick, they got to take care of me. Most people spend the first 21 years of their life trying to become an adult. Once they get to that age and become an adult and become responsible legally and morally, they look around at the world and they see how tough it is, and they spend the rest of their life trying to climb back into the womb. Trying to find somebody or something that will protect them from the world. And that is the downfall of this country. When you go home to daddy, you have to give up your freedom. So when you ask the federal government for benefits, and you contract with them and give up your constitutional rights and your state citizenship to become a 14th Amendment citizen of the Federal District of Columbia, you have given up your freedom. And that's why they're able to do so many unconstitutional things and pass so many unconstitutional laws, is because there aren't any constitutional citizens left in the country. Yes, sir. Are you talking about the difference between an equity citizen and a sovereign citizen? That's absolutely correct. It requires a lot of work, but it can be done. But that's not the subject of this week. What I'm trying to do is let you know where we went wrong, tell you how it happened and what's coming in the future. And now, if you'll pick up your dollar bill, we'll get into that. If you look at the outburst, you see the eagle. Now, the first design of the great seal of the United States didn't have an eagle. It had the phoenix bird. The phoenix is the symbol of the sun. The phoenix is also the symbol of the new world order rising out of the ashes of the old. It's symbolized by the number 13, which is the number of sacrifice, or death, and rebirth. It took me 20 years to learn these, the symbolism of the mystery schools and be able to decipher this and understand it. 13 is considered to be an unlucky number because 13 is connected with the fall of 
called Lucifer. But if you go to that chapter in the Bible that describes it, you'll see right there what I'm talking about. <clears throat> they thought that if they put the phoenix on the great seal, the public would quickly figure out what this was all about. So they substituted it with an eagle, which also in the mystery schools and in the ancient philosophy is the symbol of the sun. It's also the symbol of wisdom and the light. Because the eagle in the ancient mysteries was supposed to be the wisest bird because he had figured out how to fly higher than any other bird in the sky and was able to look directly into the sun and thus gain knowledge. Now, if you begin to look on here, you'll see on the astution, which is the shield, that there are 13 bars and 13 stripes. You'll see in the left talon, there's 13 arrows. In the right talon, there's an olive branch with 13 leaves and 13 olives. If you look at E pluribus unum, how many letters are there? 13. If you look at the glory above the eagle's head, you'll see what's normally called the Star of David, but it's not. And it's not Solomon's seal. Solomon never used it as a seal. But you'll see 13 pentagrams making up what's commonly known as the Star of David. Okay? What is this number 13 doing all over our seal if it's an unlucky number? Because the 13th day of the month was the day that the Pope and the King of France rounded up the Knights Templar and imprisoned them, literally within a 24-hour period. If you know, want to know the symbolism of the 22nd of November, 1963, the 22nd day of the month was the day that the leaders of the Knights Templar were burned at the stake. It was the revenge of the secret societies upon the Catholic Church when John F. Kennedy was murdered. If you count the feathers in one wing on the eagle, you'll see 32 feathers. If you count the feathers in the other wing, there's 33. 32 is the highest degree in the Freemason, Scottish Rite, Knights Templar branch of Freemasonry. The 33rd degree is the honorary degree and is the first step on what's known as Jacob's Ladder. And the degrees above the 33rd are behind the veil where they do the work out of the eye of the public toward the completion of the great work, the formation of the new world order, the deification of man, and when they reach the top, the ceiling of the temple, as it's called, the seven stars, they become a star, and those are the thousand points of light. And if you get the book called The Best of Life from last year, where they published the best pictures in Life magazine. Get that book, you'll see George Bush lying in bed on his birthday holding the pyramid with the all-seeing eye. And that photograph was picked by him to be published to notify the world that he is the president who will complete the great work and place the cap on the pyramid. He is also the first world leader since Hitler who has mentioned the words New World Order. He's also a member of the Skull and Bones, also known as the Brotherhood of Death, the sister society to the Thule Society in Germany to which Hitler and his general staff and his SS officers belong. George Bush's father helped finance Hitler's rise to power. George Bush is the worst thing that's ever happened to this country. And when you, you say he doesn't have a domestic program, it's because he doesn't give a damn about a domestic program. He's working for the completion of the great work, which is the formation of the one world government known in the mystery schools as the New World Order. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. And they don't mean out of many states, one country. I mean out of many thousand points of life working behind the veil for the completion of the great work will come the one world government. You can see the tail feathers, if you count them, there's nine. 
Those stand for the nine hidden supervisors, the real rulers of the secret societies of the world. Benjamin Franklin was the Grand Master of the Lodge of the Nine Muses of the secret societies of the world. Benjamin Franklin was the Grand Master of the Lodge of the Nine Muses in, in Europe. The Lodge of the Nine Muses was the lodge that engineered the French Revolution. Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson were both astrologers and they picked the hour, the day, the week, the month, and the year to write and sign the Declaration of Independence, and you'll find out why in just a few minutes. If you look at the glory above the eagle's head, this is their God. This is the symbol of the sun. This is the symbol of the androgynous God. The combination in one of the, men, of the masculine and the feminine force. It is the personification of the rule of the universe, of what makes everything work. And that is this. For every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. It's the yin and the yang, the positive, the negative, the male, the female. It is what makes everything work. It is the good, the evil, and you can never have one without the other. And nothing can ever manifest on this earth without automatically manifesting its opposite. The minute you begin to do something, you set in force, you set in motion forces which tend to oppose whatever it is you're doing. That's symbolized by the 13 pentagrams. The pentagram is the feminine. The six-pointed star, or so-called star of David, is the masculine. The difference is the phallus. The five-pointed star is Isis. The six-pointed star is Osiris. Fifteen is Osiris. Before he was slain, dismembered, and scattered, fourteen is Osiris, risen, deified as a god. What is the difference? The loss of the phallus. Remember, the phallus was the only thing Isis could not find in the legend. Is everybody beginning to get the drift here? Where is the 14? It's the 14 little clouds surrounding the six-pointed star. It's always there. The heart and soul of all of this is the legend of Isis and Osiris. <laughs> Now let's go to the reverse of the Great Seal. The first thing that you'll notice on here is the pyramid without a cap, which means when this Great Seal was designed, the New World Order was not completed. The great work was not completed, which meant this country was not the New World Order at that time, but could have been should we prove that we were worthy and responsible and could rule ourselves. You see, our forefathers never let us down. We are the ones who caused the experiment to fail. Everything that has happened and will happen in the future is our fault. The floating cap at the top of the all-seeing eye represents a star that used to be in the heavens and exploded in a supernova approximately 4,000 BC, and this has been confirmed by real hard science. This supernova occurred within a triangle of three stars in the southern hemisphere, and this is where the legend of the falling angel of light to the earth came from. When this supernova occurred, something fell to the earth from which man gained knowledge. And that being our object, our rock, or whatever it was, was called Lucifer. It is represented by the sun god, Osiris, Amun-Ra, the light. It's represented by an obelisk. And that was the meaning of the obelisk in the movie 2001, because Arthur C. Clarke is a member of the mystery schools. That is the real symbol of the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument is the symbolic 
presence of Lucifer in the nation's capital. The Scottish Rite Temple of the Freemasons in Washington, D.C. is exactly 13 blocks from the Oval Office. If you count the courses in the period, in the pyramid, you'll find that there's 13 courses, exactly. <clears throat> if you look in back of the pyramid, you see a barren desert, which means when they left Europe and came to this world, they left everything that they thought was bad. In front of the pyramid, you see that there's greenery starting to grow, but it's young, it hasn't grown yet, which means that their work has been planted and it's beginning to grow toward fruition. If you look at the top of the pyramid, you'll see annuit septus. So there's two ways to translate that. There's two ways to translate annuit septus. The one you will find in the dictionary is the wrong translation, but it's the one they want you to believe. It says, he smiles upon our work. He who? You're supposed to think it's God, but that's not who it is. But that's not the correct translation anyway. Annuit septus in Latin means announcing the birth of. If you look at the lower ribbon, you'll see Novus Ordo Seclorum, and Seclorum is intentionally spelled wrong, and I'll tell you why in just a few minutes. That literally means New World Order. It says, announcing the birth of the New World Order, right on the great seal of the United States of America. So George Bush did not invent the term, and neither did Hitler. The Great Seal was designed and adopted as the Great Seal of the United States in 1792. If you look at the bottom of the pyramid, you'll see some other letters. And these letters are Roman numerals, which mean 1776. If you add up all the letters on the reverse of the Great Seal, they amount to 39, which is 3 times 13. Exactly 13 of our, or excuse me, exactly 39 of our forefathers signed the Constitution. There are exactly 39 core members of the Bilderberg Group, which is today the Supra World Government. They are the ones who decide at their annual meeting what's going to happen in the next year or two. And everything that they plan always happens. They picked Bill Clinton to be the next president of the United States, and H. Ross Perot ensured that he will be. And everybody fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Now, in the philosophy of the mystery schools, they believe that thought can become reality. And at the same time, a thought becomes reality, it automatically manifests its opposite force, its opposing force. You see, the universe can't work unless that happens. You can't have a planet in orbit around the sun unless there's gravity pulling it toward the sun and centrifugal force trying to push it away. Everything that happens is opposed, always. So that's why I don't get upset when somebody attacks me. I know the minute I open my mouth. I have set into motion myself the forces that will make that happen. It's a law. Now, they believe that everything always manifests in threes. That's the symbol of the number three. They believe that the triangle is the building block of the universe. And here's how it works. Thought, action, no, thought, desire, action. Thought, desire, action. Those three things. Everything manifests in three. That's why you see this pyramid, this triangle everywhere. Remember the eye on CBS? Remember that? 
Now you see a pink triangle revolving around it as they begin to make themselves known who they are. Honeywell Corporation has a branch in Europe called Lucifer. The only approved religion of the United Nations is the Lucis Trust. Lucis means light. Their newspaper is called Lucifer. Their newspaper is called Lucifer. So if everything can manifest from a thought, and it also always manifests in threes, everybody get a piece of paper and a pen, and I'm going to show you what's coming in the future. Because this date, 1776, was chosen by Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson to ensure that it does. I'll take questions after I'm finished here, but I got to concentrate to keep my train of thought pure. <laughs> there is such a thing. On that piece of paper, at the top, put a dot. That represents the thought. Underneath that dot, with plenty of space between them, put three triangles beside each other, horizontally across the page. The center triangle underneath that dot. In other words, you'll have a dot here, you'll have a triangle here, one over here, and one over here. Okay? Now the dot represents the thought. The three triangles represent the manifestation of that thought. Now below each of those triangles, put another triangle with the apex down. In other words, the base of the first triangle will become the base of the second triangle, and you will have then three trapezoids. Okay? And then look at the back of my book, and you'll see Colonel Aquino's paper on mind war, and you'll see the three trapezoids right in his letterhead. Now I'm going to go across this and I'm going to show you the symbolism, the future is encoded in the great seal and the symbolism of the Roman numerals 1776. And I'm going to go right straight across and you do the same thing that I do, okay? It's M, put M at the top of the apex of the first triangle. Put down the left leg of the triangle and put C. I'm, sure, I'm sorry, D. It's M, D, and then go right straight across the base of the top triangle and put C. I'm reading them right straight across. If you've already got my drift, you can go ahead and do it yourself. Second triangle at the top is C. Down the left leg, L. Across the base, X. On the third triangle at the apex, X. Down the left leg, V across the base, I. Now if you read across the top, it decodes this way. You have M, C, X. M, C, X in Roman numerals stands for 1,110. That's a year, 1110. In the year 1110, on the Temple Mount, Mount Sion in Jerusalem, the Knights Templar were founded by the Priories of Sion. And that is the order that our forefathers belonged to. Now, we're going to put the numbers at the bottom apex, at the apex of the bottom triangles. And we'll do that by reading across the base of the top triangles. So on the first one, you have DC. What is that? 600. D is 500, C is 100. So that's 600. Put 600 at the bottom apex. On the next one, you have LX. What is LX? 60. Put 60 at the base or the apex of that triangle. And the next one is VI. What is that? 6. Add them all up. This nation was founded to establish the Antichrist upon the throne of the world for the purpose of bringing Christ back into the world. Remember I told you earlier this morning that at the heart and soul of this is the ancient war between God and Lucifer. And the Lucifer.
Luciferian Mystery Schools are bringing this to pass. Now, I see some real stunned looks on some faces here. And everybody thought religion was a joke. If you don't believe in God, for all intents and purposes, to you there is no God. Remember this. If the people who rule the world and have the power and the money to manipulate large masses of money believe in God, you better understand what that God is and what it means for you. Because you're always on the bad end of the stick. And if they believe in Lucifer, you better understand that also. Because you're still on the bad end of the stick because unless you take the power, you never are going to have any. In this country, it started out that the citizens had all the power, and over the years, the citizens, because of their greed, their apathy, and their irresponsibility, have given it away to those who were waiting with open arms to take it from you. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Can you talk real loud, please? In what you're saying, the forefathers yes. designed it. Yes. And they designed it in terms of the way you're proposing that they designed the good instead of the good and it's the opposing forces. All they had to do was establish this nation under God and it created the Antichrist because it's the only, only nation in the history of the world that was ever created under God. It automatically set in motion its opposition, which is the fulfillment of prophecy. And when they set up the federal government, the 14th piece, that is the instrument of Lucifer. That's right. Why would they set that up? Because an experiment is no good if it's closed. I understand. Forget the word. I, I, can, I agree and I really appreciate your picture. It's just that I feel very strongly that, that in that they designed it, that 14th piece, they inherently put our demise in it. No, no, no. No, 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 no. They established an experiment. The experiment was, were you responsible and would you stay free? Or would you contract to give up your freedom because you are irresponsible? That was the experiment. Can man rule himself or does he need a daddy? Okay, the predisposition, the formula itself, the theory itself, if one is really in the belief of God and understands and accepts God completely, then there's no need for experiment. You don't understand. They didn't believe in the God of the Bible. Our forefathers did not believe in the God of the Bible. They believed in man as God. They were members of the mystery schools. Okay, so now we're, I'm getting, now we're getting close enough to where I want to be, which is that then, the fourth, then our forefathers, in that they were not in God, and they were not in God, they were not in God, and they were not in God, were not in God, and of God. Okay? He could not do you're getting this. Into, were, you're getting into an area that's side. out of the bounds of this discussion. I, I wanted to bring it. I understand. But it, it doesn't apply in this discussion because you're coming from a point of believing in a specific religion and we're talking about facts that happen in the world. Except one premise that you presented that I really have a question. That is, how can you accept the Constitution or how can one accept the Constitution that is designed by the forefathers that inherently has this strength? Simple. So, Name one other government or one other document that you would rather live under. I'm not talking about on this earth. I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about right here, reality on this earth. Name one other document or nation that you would rather live under. That's why. Because it is the best that exists or ever has existed in the world. And the fault is not with the document. It's with us. I agree. I agree with that. Except that in the premise that uh, if I have to go for the lesser of two people, I'm not going to go for the lesser of two people. I'm not going to go for people at all. But we're not talking about you. I know. This was an experiment to find out what mankind in general would do. And what mankind in general did was choose not to be responsible. I agree. I'm finished. Thank you for the you questions. Yes. <laughs> What's your perception of the original reason for the 
866. In the mystery schools, it means something entirely different. It doesn't mean antichrist. It doesn't mean evil to the people in the mystery schools. The 666 symbol in the mystery schools is the final elevation of man to the pure. Why those particulars? Pardon? Why those particulars? Uh, that's beyond the scope of this lecture also. It involves a system of encoding called gematria. You see, in the ancient languages, they didn't have numbers. All they had was letters and words. All they had was letters and words. And sentences, and paragraphs, and chapters, and books. Every letter was assigned a number. So every word had a number. Every letter had a number. Every sentence had a number. Every paragraph had a number. And they would write in exoteric language the message that they wanted you to get, and in there was encoded in numbers the esoteric meaning that only the adepts could decipher. They had to do this because they were oppressed by the kings, the queens, the church, the people, all hated these men. So they learned how to go underground, how to infiltrate, how to take over organizations, cities, states, governments, countries, and now they're going for the world. And they communicate in symbolism and gematria. And if you don't understand how to read those symbols and how to decipher the esoteric message written, hidden in the encoding by gematria, then all you get is the exoteric interpretation of an esoteric, what they consider true, that's hidden. They call themselves the guardians of the secrets of the ages. Now, when the Arabs invented the numbering system, the numbers, then mathematics was developed. And that's why some of the greatest mathematicians of history, Pythagoras, is one of the revered men within the mystery schools. You go to any Masonic Lodge, you'll see references to Pythagoras all over the place. And other great mathematicians. They built, encoded, all of the secrets that they knew within everything that they built. The pyramids contain all of the knowledge of the history of man, all the science that man knew, everything that he knew about the heavens, and astrology is all encoded within the architecture of the Great Pyramids. The Temple of Solomon was the next one that encoded up to that point everything that man had ever learned throughout his history, and it was guarded and held by the mystery school. Then in churches and great cathedrals, and if you know how to decipher it, you can read the history of mankind to that point. What they believed in, what they didn't believe in, everything they knew about the stars and the heavens, everything they knew about mathematics, everything they knew about governments, everything is there. Whenever you see a building with a cornerstone with a number on it and the letters A-L encoded in that building up to the date that that building was built was everything that man knew about himself, his world, and the heavens at that time. A-L means Anos Luminous. It's a 6,000-year calendar that began in the year 4,000 B.C. when a supernova occurred in the heavens and something fell to earth, which they called Lucifer. And man learned from that. And it ends in the year 2000. And in the year 2000 will be the end of the old world and the beginning of the new. This is what they believe, and this is what they are engineering. And unless we find out whether or not we want it and either stop it or join it, it will happen. Yes, sir. Is it your perception that the people involved in these societies are most intelligent and people? No. In what 
They believe that they are. They are the most cunning people on the face of this earth. I will grant you that. And they are all racist. They're all religions. Esoterically. But esoterically, they do not believe in any God. They believe that man is God. They have no allegiance to any nation at all. They are sworn to the furtherance of the interests of the order and the completion of the great work, which is the formation of the new world order and the deification of man. Yes? I have no idea. These are secret societies. They have a pyramidal structure of organization. Don't go out of here and start beating up Masons. <laughs> Most of them don't know anything about what they're a part of, and that's the reason for the degrees of initiation, and that's the reason why there's a whole bunch of them down here and only a few at the top. All of these in the organization down here are being directed by the few at the top, and the few at the top are the only ones who really know what's going on. Yes. What would be the significance then in the state of Nevada with, I've seen this on every port of film, and I've never seen it in any other states like California or Oregon, but I've seen AD and AL two days. That means that you're living in a Masonic state. That means your state, if that's on every building in the state. And Utah. That this state. And Utah. Utah. The, the Mormon Church, and I'm not trying to beat up on any Mormon either. The Mormon Church was founded by three 33rd degree Freemasons. And everywhere in the Mormon religion, you will see Masonic symbology. And don't go out of here beating up on Mormons. Those people don't know. <laughs> yeah. My question is, what would be the significance of Nevada Interesting information about my, my grandfather was a very earthy father, and he was also a founding member of a big Baptist church, mm -hmm. of which I was born and raised in, but ultimately my father broke away from it and went on to do his Sure. Uh, you want to know how could he be a Freemason and be a member of the Baptist church? It's very simple. He was no dummy, this guy the was end a, justifies the means. In his community, if to further the interest of the great work, he had to join the Baptist church, that's what they will do. In two weeks, if they have to bomb the Baptist church, they will do that also. This is my grandfather. He did not have any prominence uh, in the beginning. He, was, he came from Mendes and from a poor dirt farm, but he ended up doing all this stuff. That's okay. And it's, uh, he was one of the thousand points of light that he, George Bush talks about. He managed to be pretty influential in our community. 33rd degree Masons are always influential in the community. Then I have another conflict uh, with the 33rd degree Mason. I met a guy who was our at my age. He told, he told me that he was a 33rd degree Mason, but it, it was just a matter of paying the dues to people. He is not a 33rd degree Mason. I understand that. Okay. And you also I, have to understand. I find that sounds a little weird. You just don't become a 33rd degree Mason. No. 33rd degree Mason is a meritorious degree. Right. You have to be invited. Right. And you have to go to Washington, D.C. for the initiation. President right. Harry Truman was a 33rd degree. Yeah. My grandfather went to Moscow for the test ban treaty signed. He was invited to that. He went to Moscow. No, notice what he said in Moscow. Hmm. At the highest level, they all belong to the same club. In 1966, he went over there. And, uh, the Cold War was a scam. The Soviet Union was created by the United States and London Freemasons and financed by banks in the United States and London. And the Rockefeller family has a branch of Chase Bank in the Kremlin that's been there since the beginning. There was never any financial collapse in the Soviet Union. It was time to bring about the New World Order. That's what, every, that's what everything that's happening in the world is about right now. The only thing standing in their way is the American people, 250 million of them with the right to keep and bear arms, and that's why there's such a concerted attack upon the Second Amendment. Because the only thing that can stop them now, today, is us. The minute we give up our guns, it's all 
over that instant. There is, there is a joint resolution in Congress right now, H.J. 438, to repeal the Second Amendment. Do you get my drift? What if anything can we do about that? Pardon me? What if anything can we do about that? Start kicking your congressman's ass and tell him he's a dead sucking duck if he passes it. Now, with the Soviet Union collapsed, let me ask you some questions here that you need to be thinking about. With the Soviet Union collapsed, what is the SDI program for? Let me tell you what's going to happen. Where do these crop circles come from? What are they developing in space? Lasers, beam weapons, aren't they? You know that if you can direct a concentrated beam of microwaves at a wheat field, you too can make crop circles. What are these crop circles telling us? Extraterrestrials are real. The Earth Mother is suffering. Read all these translations of the crop circles. And everything points to, you better join a one world government. It's not being done by aliens. It's being done by the SDI program. What does it mean if they could beam microwaves to the Earth right on target and make complicated designs in wheat fields? It means that they can single out one individual person and blast him with microwaves. And what happens when you blast flesh and bone with microwaves? It cooks. There will come a day when somebody will be walking down the street. Mark my words, I make this prediction, and I swear upon the Bible that it will come true. A man will be walking down the street and burst in flames as he walks. Mark my words. That will happen. Yes. Why did the uh, builder of our society uh, feel compelled to uh, dump uh, George Bush? George Bush is too dirty. He's dripping with muck. He is in imminent danger of being impeached. So, but isn't he so they have decided to give him an easy out. He doesn't have to resign. He's just going to get beat, and they'll blame it on Perot. And Perot is also a 33rd degree Freemason, as is George Bush, as is Bill Clinton. You've been set up. You've been screwed because you didn't ask the right questions. And all these people who said, I'm going to vote for Perot. I don't care what his policy is. We just need change. Well, you're going to get it. You're going to get change. You're going to get what you want. If you were one of those people, yes. Actually, right, this man, Mark Walters, was interviewing Perot as to the reason why he did this is for the best of the people. My decision is for the best of the people. He knows what you got to do when he He knows what to say, doesn't he? The question is, do you know what to believe? Now, understand this. No matter what I say up here during this lecture, it's to make a point, and I don't mean anything personal for anybody in this room, period. But if I have an opportunity to make a point, I'd never pass it up, because I may not get that opportunity again. I like, I love, I care about each and every one of you. That's why I'm doing this. If I didn't, I wouldn't waste my time on you. So if you feel affronted by anything I say, Please reevaluate that because I don't mean to affront, affront anyone. I'm trying to make you see the meaning of what is happening in the world. And what has that got to do with Room Lake? Everything. What better way to unite all of humanity in a one world government than if we were attacked by some other species from some other planet? And every time someone sees one of these crafts flying in the air, they say, extraterrestrials. They must have x-ray vision. I've never seen who's in those craft. Yes? If the phoenix, uh, the bird, rebirths itself every 500 years, and uh, October 12, 1492, Columbus sells, oh, discovered a new world, uh, do you think October 12th 
1992, five hundred years later? Absolutely, yes. What do you think of this? You can watch for a major catastrophe of some kind or the beginning of a third world war. It could be anything. But something will happen, yes, because it always does. You have to understand that numbers are significant to the secret societies. And if you look at the major events in history, they conform to this coding of the gematria in these numbers. President Kennedy was assassinated on November the 22nd, 1963. And if you take all of that out using adding up these numbers, what you get is 666. November 22nd was the date that the leaders of the Knights, not November 22nd, but the 22nd day of the month was the date that the leaders of the Knights Templar were burned at the stake. November is the 11th month. 11 and 11 is 22. Any way you play with those numbers, it comes up to the symbology of the secret society. President Kennedy was not assassinated by the government or the mafia or homosexual Cubans or anything else. He was assassinated by members of the secret societies from the agents, agencies of the CIA, the Office of Naval Intelligence of which I was a part, Division 5 of the FBI and the Secret Service. Dealey Plaza is on the 33rd parallel. In Dealey Plaza is a plaque commemorating the location of the first Masonic temple in the state of Texas. Why don't they ever show that on television? President Kennedy was shot in the back at the position of the heart, in the throat, and in the head. The exact wounds suffered by the man in the Masonic initiation known as Hiram Abiff who was struck by a blow to the chest, a blow to the throat, and a blow to the head by the state, the church, and the mob. And their goal is to avenge his death by destroying the church, the state, and the mob. The assassination of John F. Kennedy was a blow to the Catholic Church by the Freemasons in a Masonic country that dared to elect a Catholic as president. Why do you see all these shows? That John F. Kennedy was a womanizer? To convince you that he wasn't worthy of being president, so you shouldn't care who assassinated him. Wake up. When did that happen? When was the woman in the past time? One year. Has anybody got that off the top of their head? I didn't bring that with that's easy to look at. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Talk real loud. Okay, it's interesting that number one is the male dominated dominated civilizations for quite a long while. And it's interesting that the four are male, and the women aren't allowed, they weren't allowed. I would just like to mention to the women here in the group. I second that emotion. <laughs> and it's time that we really get clear about that. Clear. Here's what it's time that we do, that we all come together and grant each other the same that we would grant ourselves and become once again Americans and nothing else. Not left, not right, not Democrat, not Republican, not man, not woman, but Americans. And there is one religious teaching that I believe is the best teaching. I don't care what you believe, and that is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And it doesn't matter who said it. It doesn't matter whether you believe in God or Jesus Christ or not. That is what we need today amongst us. And we can work miracles if we work together. Because one of the biggest and best tools that the secret societies use against us is to divide us against each other while they conquer us all. Christian against Jew, black against white, women against men, abortion against anti-abortion, flag burners against anti-flag burners. People that want to change the Constitution are people that don't. If you're an American, you better leave the Constitution alone. That's all there is to it. That is America. One thing that Americans have never understood is that the United States of America is the Constitution. It doesn't exist anywhere else. And if you change that document, you change this nation. If you tear it up, you have destroyed this nation. 
because that document is this nation, and without it, there is no nation, and there is no freedom, there is nothing. And understand this, whether you believe in God or not, you better profess a belief in God because God is the only thing that gives man inalienable rights that cannot be taken away. If there is no God, man is no different from any other animal on this earth can be enslaved legally and rightfully and lawfully by anyone powerful enough to do it. That's why the concept of God appeared amongst men in the first place. Whether he exists or not, he must exist or man is nothing. I rest my case. <laughs> case. <laughs> So now, I'm going to show you the videotape. Yes, I'm sorry. This is a large question, but it's a simple one. Uh, in the, as it appears, according to this perspective that we now have, uh, it makes no difference who we vote for. Right? It, uh, That's wrong. It always makes a difference who you vote for, but Americans have a misconception. You think you have to vote for the people they put in front of you. That's not what the Constitution says. It says you have a right to vote and you can vote for whoever you want. You can write another name in on that ballot. And if your state says you can't, you take that to the Supreme Court, and I guarantee you your state will lose. It's a constitutional issue. Can you talk real loud, please? I was registered to vote this year, and I read the guidelines, and to me, I understood it, but I could not vote for president unless I was registered to be a Democrat or Republican, because that's the only people that are, the only parties that are registered. You know, that's unconstitutional. The Constitution says you have the right to vote. They cannot make stipulations on you have to do this to vote or you have to do that to vote. They can't stop you from voting. It is a right that you have, and the Constitution restricts the government from stopping you. So you don't have to belong to any party. That's right. The Constitution says nothing about parties. It says you have the right to vote. So are you saying that this activity out here in Green Lake is, with anomalous aircraft, let's say, uh, is more or less a continuation or a perpetration of ideas or uh, events to distract us from what's really going on and it's them that are able to do so do that. It's also part of a mind control program to convince you that there's an external threat to this earth which does not exist. Remember all the slides I showed you? Reagan said it six times during his presidency. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if we would all come together if we were attacked by some other species from out there in space? What? Six times. The president said the same thing six times in six different speeches over eight years. What, did he forget he said it before? Well, he was pretty forgetful. He forgot everything else. <laughs> you ever hear of a Ron Contra? Oh, I'm sure you good. It's incredible. Nothing's worse always twice on one issue and talk about the world. Because he doesn't want you to know the truth. Recently, remember, George Bush is a member of the Skull and Bone. When you go through the initiation in these secret societies, no matter which one, you must suffer a symbolic death and a rebirth. In the Skull and Bones, George Bush had to go through this initiation lying naked in a sarcophagus with a ribbon tied around his genitals, which was the symbolic amputation of the genitals the rising of man above the animal in man to the state of God. In the old days, they used to really do it. When you reached a certain degree, you had to have your genitals amputated, signifying the elevation of man above the animal in man. Okay, That's the symbology of the sphinx. The sphinx is to remind mankind for eternity that he is nothing more than an animal with a brain. That's the big mystery everybody's been looking for. It's right there in front of everybody the whole time. That's what it's about. Yes, sir. How are the skull and bones which have such your sexual history all the way Yes. Now, recently George Bush was asked, Are you a Christian? Now listen to how he ducked that issue very well, because they use semantics. 
He said, if you're asking if I've been reborn, the answer is yes. George Bush can't even say the word Christian. Okay, let's take a real short break, and then I'll start the video. Thank you very much for your time. Incident involving teens and metro officers. And we'll tell you about the fires raging across the West. Plus, Ross Perot supporters decide how they will influence President Bush and Bill Clinton. And find out if a group of proclaimed UFO experts spotted their spaceship. Eyewitness News is next. KLAS-TV Channel 8, Southern Nevada's 24-hour news source. And now, this is Eyewitness News 8. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kathy Randall. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Don Hudson. Could it be that UFOs really do fly over a part of the Nevada test site known as Area 51? Well, many people claim to have seen mysterious objects hovering erratically in the night sky near Rachel, Nevada. Last night, UFO believers and others who just aren't sure went looking for some proof. 130 miles north of Las Vegas, in the dark desert sky, people say they've seen unidentified flying objects. Yes, UFOs. I thought I'd see for myself what's really going on or not. UFO Universe magazine is the sponsor of this weekend sky watching expedition. A, a number of our investigators from uh, the various publications that I put out have been out here and have had uh, verifiable uh, sightings. Bill Cooper claims to have videotaped a glowing craft in January. Cooper believes the UFOs are made by a secret branch of the U.S. government as part of a scam to create a new world order. They do it when they think people aren't going to be able to see it. I had to come in January. About 50 UFO enthusiasts were ready with binoculars, telescopes, and cameras. And we just saw something that we don't really know what it is, but it was moving up and down and sideways and back and forth and changing colors from white to red. And it wasn't no helicopter. It wasn't no airplane. Several Lincoln County deputies and Nevada Highway Troopers made their presence known. I would request us to come out and give my hand on the... The people that are out here look for the UFOs. Yes. Melinda Leslie says she's been out here six times before and seen unusual lights on five different outings. The big question is, is it alien related? Is it is it related to uh, alien technology? Or is it really super, super highly secret advanced technology that is just really unknown by the basic community? Beckley suspects something is going on behind the mountains, something the public deserves to know about. There's so many people now who have witnessed this and who have taken videotape of these uh, flights and have seen it with their own eyes that there, there's no doubt that something mysterious and very, very strange, some secret testing is being done here by our, uh, our military. And I think we should push for some sort of answer. We should write to our congressman. Well, our photographer says he did not see any UFOs while covering the sky watching expedition. 